Hey everyone and welcome back to a BlizzCon speculation themed edition of the Warcraft news. And what a week it's been. If you would like to win a virtual ticket, then check out our giveaway, which is linked down below. There's only a few days left in that. Then also, it's the last four days of our rather chunky Patreon master tier for this month. You'll get the priest pack, a bookmark, and the gorgeous remaster of our first ever print. Our patrons are the backbone of what we do here, and in just over 10 days, our second editor will be aboard. He brings nearly a decade of editing experience. Okay. Uh, you know, like from a big proper That's firm. Good. So uh, yeah, I can't be more excited for what he's going to bring to our team. So thank you to them for helping all that happen. And let's get into the news. First, super quick thing. So Ian tweeted that they agree with feedback on the corruption system regarding tiers having variable corruption levels. And he's confirmed that they will in the future be fixed corruption levels. This is a big win for both players and devs. This is obviously what everybody wanted. I remember Bellier's first video that he made about this subject. He specifically mentioned this and... Uh, he said that, like, basically, this is, like, worse than Titan forging in a way. Uh, Ian saw that. I guess he agreed. And uh, now we're not going to have that issue. So that's fucking great. And it's a clear example of the PTR process working as it should. So that's excellent news. Then also, in our Whispers of Ilganoth video, when I said mass... I want to say another thing. Blizzard, see, last year, remember how Blizzard, they, uh, they increased the price of the virtual ticket? Because, and then people still saw a perceived value of the virtual ticket going to be higher because they'd be able to play Classic WoW for the first time. And then I said last year that they would keep the price the same and not offer the same benefits in order to try to give a price increase with a bonus to where people would be okay with it and then keep the price increase but get away, get rid of the bonus. This is exactly what they did. Just, I'm just saying, just saying levels. This is a big win for both players and devs, and it's a clear example of the PTR process working as it should, so that's excellent huh. news. Then also, in our Whispers of Ilganoth video, when I said masters with a plural possessive apostrophe, I did actually mean that. The edit was a mistake that I made and did not catch, and uh, yeah, once your new editor joins, he's going to be implementing a pretty darn cool double approval process going forward. So, there's that, and let's get into BlizzCon. Okay, BlizzCon 19 is set to be a massive one. 2018 was clearly a disaster with them misjudging Diablo Immortal and yeah. more than likely just, you know, having actually had to have pulled a planned announcement or two. I mean, it would just be wild for them to have thought that Immortal could have held the con. We also need to take in a little bit of context. There's 800 employees were let go across the non-core development related departments of Blizzard. Yeah, now, I wonder layoff why. layoff came along with an initiative to hire on more core development roles. Now, the Activision Blizzard wide goal is just to ship more product, with there being leaks suggesting that Activision have got 10 and projects on the go, three of which are Call of Duty, and that means we can assume that the Blizzard Entertainment side of that business are similarly busy. Earlier this year, two of my sources- I think like last year, yeah, they're probably right. I, I mean, like, I think that BlizzCon came out and last year, and it didn't didn't really go very well. BFA wasn't doing very well. Diablo 3 was dead. StarCraft has been dead for years. Overwatch was dying. Blizzard probably just had a meeting, and they sat down. Activision Blizzard just sat down, and they're like, we are fucking everything up. It's like, we used to do everything right, and somehow, now we're not doing anything right. And... People got fired, things started changing, and I, I think that we're going to see a turnaround, okay? Because there's no way, like, a company cannot continue to operate like that by just failing in every single one of its IPs. So I, I think they're going to have to, uh, th they're going to turn things around mentioned a shooter project that was taking dev time away from Overwatch 2, and that Overwatch 2's development actually left Overwatch itself a little bit starved. Well, a few months after that, we then saw a Kotaku report of a StarCraft shooter being cancelled. That was actually along with a few mobile games being cancelled, and that's all in the name of them focusing on their core product. Now, we believe that Diablo 4 was at one point supposed to be the core of BlizzCon 2018, and that Overwatch yeah. 2 was well into development that's by what that made time. Sense. Now, with the StarCraft shooter being cancelled to put developers back onto Overwatch 2, that means that it's far more likely we'll see that this year. Then as for Diablo 4, well, that's been in development for three years now. That is since the mid-2016 cancellation of Diablo 3 Hades, which was its first incarnation that was worked on for two years which following supposed the cancellation to be like a Diablo, of or a Diablo Dark Souls 3 game. Expansion 2. And this pretty My much all means that the stars are aligning for an insanely busy BlizzCon. Yeah. So, with all of this context in mind, let's get into the schedule. So, okay. we're starting off with the opening ceremony 
Konami as per usual. Then we've got four back-to-back -back coming soon panels. There are then two more coming soon panels on Saturday, and I think this is, I mean, this is massive. I think that the four day one coming soon panels are basically, I mean, that's just confirming that Blizzard will have that's four an announcement. major announcements yeah, obviously. this BlizzCon. See, if Hearthstone is having a new obviously. expansion, then that would just be covered in the Hearthstone update panel, which is already announced. Same goes for, say, new Heroes of the Storm maps or right. StarCraft 2 updates. And when you look at the schedule, you see the Hearthstone. They donate, they, they dedicated 15 minutes to Heroes of the Storm. That's a lot. I mean, like, that's a, that's a lot of time that you would put into it. Wait, sorry, sorry, 45. Oh, no, no, never mind. You're right. It would have been even funnier because I saw the 1015. Yeah, 45 minutes, exactly. And uh, Heroes Must Be a Deathwing is out panel. Yeah, they're going to basically be like, yeah, here are the different ways that, you know, you dozen people that are still playing the game. Here's how we're still going to make some money out of you. And they're like, wow. And then that's it. It's the whole thing. And heroes have their update panels on day one. At World of Warcraft and Overwatch do actually have their update panels on day two. So that's so actually the initial Kong burst of four no, coming soon panels. Still. Now, you may think that this means that the coming soon panels can't cover WoW or Overwatch. What do you mean? And that's yeah, just not the case. Yeah. In 2017, when Blizzard yeah. had um, Battle for Azeroth be mean? unveiled, they actually did a full preview panel on day one, and then later on they did a deep dive systems panel on day two. So something very similar could happen there for Overwatch. So their day two update panels are very likely to expand on what's going to be covered in their coming soon panels. It's also quite possible that the two coming soon panels on day two are there to expand on the day one major announcements. So let's just talk about those day one major announcements. Now, one of them is almost certainly Diablo 4's announcement. That just makes complete sense. Yeah. Now, we know that Blizzard no longer like yeah. wish to announce games too early. They feel like they did that with StarCraft 2 and Diablo 3 and that kind of bit in the ass. They did that. Like, I remember they announced Diablo 3. It was like years before it actually came out and I, I i'm actually really really happy about this like diablo 4 i i don't think i've ever really said this before but in a lot of ways i'm actually more excited for diablo 4 than i am for uh for the wow expansion like i i really really think that they're gonna come out with something that's badass and like yeah the wow expansion is gonna be cool sure but i want to play a new game in a way like, the thing is, like, WoW expansion is going to be more and more and more of the same, right? But, like, I really, really, really want to play Diablo 4. Like, that's the main thing. I even thought about, like, playing a little bit of D3. But, you know, I uh, didn't do that. Uh, it's going to go back to its darker roots. Well, of course, that's what it should do. Like, uh, that's the thing is Diablo should be like that. Fuck yeah little bit. And then, of course, Titan was talking oh, about far too early. Now, that being said, nothing. Blizzard also Literally just nothing. do want to get more products I'm out there. And Diablo 4 Fenris is their longest in development current project, mm -hmm. well, at least that we know about. So, a 2020 release date and an in-depth BlizzCon would not be all that unexpected. So, I believe we're going to get a big reveal during the opening ceremony. I think that'll be followed up by a developer panel that goes into more depth in day one. Then, I think one of the day two coming soon panels will probably be even more depth on Diablo 4. Now, more specifically i think that would be a general game overview for day one and then maybe a class deep dive in day two because of course diablo classes are pretty darn major now there also had been rumblings of a diablo 2 remaster and uh, if that's the case that could be on day two after all i think the classic games team they're going to need something to do after warcraft 3 reforged now that's a good point yeah they need to do warcraft 3 reforged i want to see warcraft 2 even like honestly that would be really cool uh like an updated warcraft 2 and uh, that'd be it. I'd be happy with that. Like, if they did those two things, that would be fucking amazing. You know what they should do? This would be fucking badass. Is they could make Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 1 the storylines and just put them in Reforged. And just make it to where you can't have heroes in them. And just, you know, like, augment it a little bit and kind of play out the story. Because I know in Warcraft 1, like, the original Warcraft strategy game, like, hardly anybody fucking played that. And if they made those into campaigns and basically, like, made them as expansions for Warcraft 3 Reforged, basically Warcraft 2 Reforged with, like, Warcraft 3 graphics and stuff, I think people would be really happy about that. That'd be amazing. Warcraft 2, I loved Warcraft 2, man.
Um, Overwatch 2, that is likely to have a release date after Diablo 4, at least in my view, so I would expect Blizzard to have that be one of its coming soon panels, and then to cover both it and the live version of Overwatch during the Day 2 What's Next panel. It actually may even be possible that the Day 2, one of the Day 2 coming soon panels could be Overwatch 2, and if that was the case, then I actually imagine it would be more just going deeper on the PvE aspects of Overwatch 2, because that really is the new big thing there. Now, as for World of Warcraft, well, that's where things get a bit challenging. So, patch 8.3 of Battle for Azeroth, it, it's a good effort, but it's clearly a content reuse patch. I mean, bar the raid, and that was likely completed ages ago, yep. most of the patch content, it's it's just reusing existing. Yeah, this, this doesn't, like, assaults, that's not a new feature. You know what they should remove? They should remove new feature. New feature. Horrific Visions, Nylotha, and then Allied Races, I guess. These are not new. I, I'm excited about 8.3, of course. Everybody's excited about 8.3. That It's great. Like, yeah, awesome. Really cool. But it's another patch. Like, they need to do something that's going to... It's going to be more than that. Like, that, I, the, this expansion, I think, is really important for Blizzard. Uh, this expansion is really going to define if Blizzard is going to be able to innovate on the game any further than they have. I think that innovation for the game has been kind of low in terms of like new content and everything. Now they have had some some good things like Mythic Plus, and I think Islands are okay uh, if they do it right. Uh, they need to make a few changes, but Islands are at least a good start. But you also have things like Warfronts, and you have things like LFR, and like the way that World Quests work now. Uh, they're not innovative. They're not fun. They're not engaging for players. And that's why people aren't playing the game. It's because it's not innovative and it's not fun. Like, I, I, I can't see how doing a new expansion with two new continents and a new raid, you know, a handful of new dungeons and scaled up gear is going to bring people back and get them excited for the game again. Now, don't get me wrong, I think that's smart, and I generally do think that Blizzard yeah. should feel more free to reuse all of Azeroth in the name of giving us more content. At the end of the day, content isn't art assets, content is gameplay, and the whole world is there. Still, though, it's clear that 8.3 is trying to get as much gameplay as it can out of, I mean, as little assets as it can get away with. There's no new zone, there's reused assaults, there's a raid, and I will admit, though, that these solo horrific visions, I think, are really, really fun. Now, why am I focusing here in this video on why 8.3 is a quick turnaround patch. Well, pretty simple. I think it's because Blizzard are going to announce the next WoW expansion with an August yep. 2020 release date. I mean, Legion was August 2016, BFA was August 2018, the next one's probably August 2020, you know? That God, would be I feel insane. Now. Uh, now, Battle for Azeroth that would be was clearly insane, an expansion dude. that's just months behind schedule through the patch cycle. I mean, as I covered a while back, the relative release date from launch to patch 8.2 is actually closer to the patch 7.3 relative release date from launch. And yeah, that means the Blizz are like literally two, three months behind schedule, and that's pretty major when you're a big company like Blizzard. Yes, it is. And that's likely because they realized the BFA needed triage. I mean, 8.1 was clearly ready to go far earlier content-wise, but they needed to make changes uh, like to take um, player feedback into account. So I believe that 8.3 is basically a big dev time sa uh, saving exercise that still actually lets BFA have its final patch, but does not delay the next expansion. Now, if this is the case, and... I feel like that might be true, that they're probably like and this is what they did with WAD. They were like, well, we had a bunch of story for it, but you hate the expansion, so... Whoop, there's Legion, here we go. All right, forget about this uh, whole WAD thing, and you're going to have a boost. You literally can play WoW. You can play WoW now, and you can play the game for a year and not even know that Warlords of Draenor happened. It can just be like a like a scary story that they tell all the new players. Like, yeah, once upon a time, there was an expansion that came out. There was only two raid tiers. No Mythic Plus. All the dungeon gear was invalidated. And all you had to do was sit in a capital city. But every person had their own capital city. And that's all you did. And you had to deal with your followers. And they would have to bring in items for you and all these different things. And you never played with any other people. The world was worthless. There was no flying. And the, the new player's like, ah, no, don't tell me about that. Where's my Titan forging? I need to do my plus 10 for the week. Oh, God. Oh. 
you know, and they're terrified. Uh, and really, you can play you can play WoW for like a, a year now, and you not even know what happened. I actually think it likely is, then BFA may have the shortest post-expansion content yeah. drought ever. And if so, then I actually think, yeah, congratulations, dev team. If that actually happens, you really did manage to thread the needle impressively. Yeah. So with that in mind, I'm expecting one of the day one coming soon panels to be World of Warcraft's next expansion, right. with the day two World of Warcraft update panel giving us more details, similar to, um, say, the system's deep dive panel of uh, BlizzCon 2017 for BFA. Now, a part of me also wonders if Blizzard will want to be a bit more cautious. BFA, I mean, it must have burnt them hard. And, you know, I think it's a case of learning I bet the it did. lessons. Because I actually think that Legion was a massive... I, 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 I bet this it did. my most controversial opinion on WoW. Um, I think the design thinking that led to Legion is the same design thinking that led to BFA. Core classes, yeah. I mean, they're not all that different. It's just that over in Legion, they were powered up to hell with artifacts, which and was just a massive design crush. And set and bonuses. the Legion gameplay that most people actually remember yes. is once they had reached, uh, the one that they had reached after months of grinding out legendaries and having choice there. I mean, Legion was still Giga Titan forging. It still had crazy RNG. It still had a big yeah. AP grind. There was a lot of catch-up mechanics, and there was classes was still that fundamentally good. have the same design language as the BFA ones, just that their tuning knobs were all turned up a little bit. So, with that same thinking of Legion leading straight into a BFA-sized pit, I've got to imagine the Blizzard actually going to be a bit more cautious and just uh, be a bit more introspective. They've, I mean, they've even, like, paved the way for the removal of Titan forging with A3. I mean, it technically is gone, so if we then got an expansion recently, set that would be prime time to shake those things up so because of that i will probably raid an 8-3 i i, I want to say this i'm probably gonna raid an 8-3 100 percent like I, I i'm hoping that like whenever uh whenever the game comes out I'm, I'm actually gonna raid we're gonna do the viewer raids the same as i used to do and i, I want to get that shit done for one week no no like because we did this like no what do you mean like back in the day back in the day like before classic came out was I or was I not first three bosses again? Cool. Then I'll do the first three bosses until I can get a better group. And, like, maybe I could find a guild to be part of or something like that and raid on stream. Here was why, like, raiding on stream can be good. It can be fun. But I don't think raiding in, like, an organized guild is fun. Because it's like, okay, clear comms. Everybody, you know, Bill has to talk to his cat again. Oh, you know, cats on the roof. Cats in the cats in the refrigerator. Cats in the microwave. Cats in the oven. Cats on the keyboard. Bill fell in the fire. You know, the cat's doing everything and it's fucking everybody up. You know, that's it. And it, it's too much, man. It's just simply too fucking much. Like... It's boring. Like, you have to sit there. You can't talk. You can't, like, make it exciting or anything. That's why the raids were boring. I think that doing raid content can be fun to watch. Uh, I think the people in general, like, guys, just go ahead and get, tell me. Um, did you think that, uh, what do you call it? Um, do you think that the raids that we did in the Eternal Palace was good content? Because I feel like, I feel like it was. I think a lot of people liked watching it. Like it was some of they, they were some of my most popular streams. Like the mythic raids, yeah, it was okay. That's fine, yeah. Like killing you bot botanist. I don't think botanist was that good. Botanist was okay. It was funny to look back on, but it wasn't really fun to do at the time. Uh, if that makes sense. No, nighthold streams were much better. Nighthold streams were awesome or awful. I think I, I don't think so at all. Very relatable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I'm expecting the follow-up panel to be just a bit different in tone to the BFA systems deep dive of 2017. Mm -hmm. I mean, that 2017 panel, it pretty much was just thinking like, hey, Legion's been great, hasn't it? But there have been a few annoying quibbles. We fixed those. And obviously, that's not really how it pans out get in terms of resulting essences, gameplay man. feel for most of BFA. Like, I really need that to do that. That being said, a bit of me does want to temper expectations. It is always possible that the Day 2 WoW update is just all we're going to get, that another one of those coming soon panels actually might be another new IP or something, and that the next expansion release date is not August 2020, and that this year's BlizzCon is just going to be 8.3 and 8.3.5. I mean, that would be really disappointing for Warcraft. I don't think it's likely, but I think it is something that could happen. Okay, so assuming we do get a WoW expansion this BlizzCon, what about the final will. coming soon panel for day one? Well, it could be new IP. Now, I'm not that connected to the rumor mill. I've not heard any rumors of new IP, so I don't know what it could actually be. Uh, when asked for a comment on the StarCraft shooter, Blizzard did say that cancelling projects is common over there, that killing Nomad yeah. led to World of Warcraft, that killing Titan led to Overwatch. So what if the cancelled StarCraft shooter 
failure was to lead to something new. That's an interesting thought, but if you think about the timelines, I just don't think that will be likely for a 2020 uh, announcement. So I don't think that they should make two shooters. Uh, I think they should just make Overwatch better. Like, they can have StarCraft be their RTS that they're, like, continually, like, innovating. They can have WoW. I think they should just work on different genres rather than try to make games that are competing for the same audience. I, I think that's a, it's a mistake just in, like, a very, very common sense way that you're cannibalizing your own audience. So, like, a lot of people choose to play. Like, here's an example. People like StarCraft more than WarCraft. This is, like, in the 90s and, like, the early 2000s. So they would choose to play StarCraft over WarCraft or vice versa. A lot of people played both, but many people also chose to play one or the other. In Blizzard's eyes, that's cannibalization of a market because your audience and your consumer is choosing to buy one product that you have over another product that you have. So you are going to make the sale anyway. That, that's that's the reason yeah it could be new ip now it could also be diablo immortal or something weird like that but i mean classic a, that would plus. Be dumb and b immortal's already been Calm announced down. already so if it was at the con it would have a yeah. named panel and funny enough it doesn't have a named panel at the con no. i think anyway so uh, i mean yeah it's the right call now of all things i suppose new ip is the most likely there although to be honest with you i did not expect to see um any new ip efforts land in this blizzcon i thought they'd be 2020 and i thought 19 would just be wow um d4 and overwatch 2 and that being said if you think about blizzard as i can't see them doing a whole new fucking ip maybe i'll be wrong about that though i ain't take a piss i'll be right back just a sec okay okay i'm back we good organization, it's always possible that they're carrying forward another project from their incubation group, just one that we've not heard about. Yep. I mean, I believe that group had a number of its mobile projects axed earlier this year. Thank but God. I mean, who knows? That could have been some of those projects axed in order to move those devs onto the one that was actually going to pan out. So there could be something there. I mean, hell, if we were to reach, there could be Blizzard Auto Chess. I mean, that would be them capitalizing on the recent auto oh. chess trend of Dota Underlords and Teamfight Tactics, as well yeah. as making use of the existing library of yeah. Hot Heroes. So, I mean, yeah, it could be something Something like that. Okay, so that would be the day one for unannounced uh, coming soon panels being D4, Overwatch 2, WoW 9.0, and probably a new IP. Then I think one of the day two coming soon panels. I'm not really excited about an auto chess. Uh, I, I watched a little bit of TF2, or sorry, TFT. <sighs> just, it, it, it just, it's not, it just doesn't excite me a whole lot. Uh, auto chess is bad. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just it, it just doesn't seem like it's that exciting to me. Could be a deeper look into Diablo 4. As for the final coming soon in day two, I mean, it could be related to an old game remaster announcement. It could be more details in Overwatch 2 or World of Warcraft, though they do both already have day two panels right now. And I suppose if it was, uh, if there was to be a new IP announcement, then that second panel in D uh, day two that's currently unannounced could be a deeper dive into that new IP. Then finally, I do want to mention a wild card that I have seen in YouTube comments quite a bit. So yes, Blizzard could do an animated series like Riot's Arcane, but you know what? I do oh. kind of doubt it. Riot are an insanely profitable company that are privately owned by Tencent. So they're not exposed to the same pressures of being a publicly traded company. Big, uh, Activision Blizzard, big, though, are. Now, I think they just find it hard to justify the spend on a series like that. Uh, maybe, like, unless they've been able to secure a really lucrative distribution deal in advance or something like that. And I guess, yeah. I mean, like, if they did, like, a series for a while, like, an animated series, I think everybody, like, a lot of people would want to watch, in my opinion. I think a lot of people would want to watch if they did an animated WoW series, but it had the same cinematics as, like, the, you know, the normal game cinematics, that would be fucking incredible. Like, I, so many people would want to see that. I know at least I would. I'd love to see that. Now, there's also Warcraft 3 Reforged, and I mean, yeah. it's a strange project. From the beta data mining, and I mean, I've seen, like, beta data mining that's not been posted publicly, and look, it just doesn't look like the Blizz quality is there. It seems like the outsourcing of the characters really hit the project. I mean, I was browsing Unity, um, the Unity Asset Store last night, and I came upon RTS environment assets yeah. that just look better than Reforged. I mean, the assets look fine. I guess they just look generic as hell. They look like Raid Shadow Legends versions of World of Warcraft characters at, at points, which is a bit unfortunate. So just with that project, 
project missing its summer 2019 release date. I mean, it's clear that it's not all well. So I imagine that we're just going to get a new release date during the opening ceremony and just, you know, then a bit in their panel and really not much more past that. So that's WoW, Overwatch 2, Diablo 4, and potentially new IP. And that does mean this is set to be a massive BlizzCon, basically one of the largest ever. Now, if we were Fuck to bench yeah. the meta drama for a second there, I think it's clear that it's going to be a great weekend for people who yeah. enjoy Blizzard games. Now, as much as the HK situation with Blitzchung and all that does suck, uh, and we'll now no doubt get like a few awkward moments during the con, I think it will be a good one for developers and players. I agree. And I mean, I just, I think I do developers agree. who it should be noted probably don't support their companies benching of their values. There was a public protest in Blizzard's campus and I mean, just knowing what a lot of the Blizzard staff will think on a wide variety of social issues and how they are social issues that do clash with, uh, you know, the sort of Chinese party line. Uh, I mean, yeah, oh I think it's not really that fair to be blaming, like, Blizzard developers for this stuff that's going on. And, I mean, yeah, I, I do hope that the devs don't get an overly hard time because, frankly, they had nothing to do with any of that stuff. But anyway, there you go. That is uh, the WoW news, of course, a very BlizzCon-themed uh, episode. Yep. I'd love to know, though, like, what do you think is going to happen there? What are you expecting? What do you think that big new IP could actually be? So, thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to support us a bit more, you can check out the Patreon. You'll also get some really cool new loot over there and uh, there's four days left on our current tier and of course there's the virtual ticket giveaway as well to check out anyway that's it for me thank you very much for watching this video and i'll see you next time all right you know what i think that made a lot of sense uh, i think retail's mass i don't know man but uh anyway like so here's the thing guys uh, 100 percent showing on auto chess. I hope that's not gonna happen, man. Uh, Overwatch 2, the search for more loot boxes. You just missed the second opportunity to advertise Sh raid Shadow Legends. Okay, dude. Uh, drink a shot whenever he says I mean. Overwatch 2 now on Switch. Overwatch 2. Yeah, I guess so. Overwatch 2 doesn't feel right to me. Sounds weird. I don't think that sounds weird at all. I, I think that like they can do. What if they do like Overwatch, but it's like I, I don't know. Actually, it uh, doesn't make sense. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind that. I don't think we're going to see another StarCraft IP in like 10 years, dude. Like, I, I don't think so. I, I think a lot of people are not going to be excited about it. No, I'm going to watch a couple of other videos. Uh, but right now, I want to make sure that I, I didn't notice that they were actually clearing the raid. And I don't want them to be like sitting there trying to get shit done while I'm AFK at the start of the entrance, uh, you know, like just sitting there doing nothing. And if that is the case, which is obviously what we will be doing, uh, I will get on my Warlock after this. And that way, at least if I'm going to leech, I'll leech some, some experience, right? Uh, that seems like the best idea. I'll at least uh, leech some experience.